Hey everybody, I am so excited to be back with you guys today. I am finally, I feel like I'm saying this a lot often, but I am finally getting to the things that I've promised you guys for quite some time. It's been kind of a crazy summer, kind of a crazy transition back um, into school. You all know I am officially a PhD student these days, and so it's just been a little busy, a little bit of adjustment, but I promise you we are coming back strong with weekly videos, so don't you worry. But I'm finally getting to the personal Q&A that I promised you guys to celebrate 500 and actually we are at 615 I think subscribers so hey to all of y'all I think this is perfect timing for this video because I think this will be an opportunity for all of you new people who maybe weren't around when I dropped my first video and did a Q&A back in February hopefully this is an opportunity for you to get to know me so, I'm going to jump right in. I have a few questions. I gave you guys a few opportunities to send me questions. And I also promised you that I would answer your question no matter what it is, no matter how deep it was, as long as it was appropriate. So I'm going to go ahead and answer all of these questions. Hopefully we can get through them in a decent amount of time because I don't want this video to be like 10 hours long. But, okay, so we're just gonna jump right into it. I have my laptop here because I wanna make sure that I read your questions correctly. So these are real questions from some of my friends and some of my followers that I've met this far in YouTube. So shout out to you all for sending these questions in and I promise I will give you my honest answer. I'm kinda nervous, but I'm excited. I've seen all these questions before, but I have not necessarily thought about my answer to them because I wanted it to be really genuine. So here we go. The first question says, what are some tips to get your channel to grow? So I put this one at the top because I figured we can just get this out the way because I think it's amazing that between February and September, so what is that, like seven, do your math gave me seven months, um, I've been able to gather up 600. And honestly, that's not the most amazing. Like I'm very grateful for all 615 of you. Some channels grow way faster than that. So I feel like this is like an average or a little above average growth um, for this time period, so I'm really thankful. So what did I use to grow my channel? So the first thing I did before I started YouTube, and this is just my personality, I researched extra hard. I looked at other people's channels, I followed people for months before um, ever deciding to do it. I looked at what they did, I listened to what programs they used for editing. Um, thankfully I have a brother who is in graphic design and does a lot of that stuff so I got some information from him. He got me connected to some different technologies and even kind of helped a little bit showing me how to use them and then I really used YouTube, it's so funny to say, but I used YouTube as a resource for YouTube. <laughs> like I researched what other people were doing. There's so much stuff out there you guys. I don't even think people realize. Like some of your favorite influencers honestly have a lot of information about how to get started, how to get your channel off the ground. So I would say start there. Do your research is very important. Some things that I came about in my research that I feel like a lot of people aren't really focusing on or don't realize the power of them. One is uh, tags. So I use this awesome program called TubeBuddy that actually shows me the tags that are really popular right now. It's actually a plugin that you put in on your um, on your Google Chrome or on your internet server. I think it might only be for Google, I'm not sure. But um, I will put the link for that down below or the link to the video that I used that like told me about TubeBuddy. It has been like, honestly the GOAT. I don't think I'd be able to like really know and understand tags and understand that entire process without TubeBuddy. So it's clutch and I use the free version. I don't pay for all the extra. I use the free version and it's enough. It's got me to where I am. The second thing is really paying attention to what is, I don't wanna say what's trendy as if like you just like make something up to match the trend per se. Um, but I pay attention to like what is getting you know, people's attention. And then I use what's already happening in my life, so not making up things or like BSing things, but I use what's in my life and like showcase it in a way where it fits the trend um, and fits what people really want to see. Like I noticed on my page, what people are attracted to mostly are AKA stuff and my natural hair stuff. Like that's just what y'all love the most. And then the next part is like, you know, my testimonies and things like that. You guys really have enjoyed. So, okay, so I look and see, you know, what are the top videos? What do those look like? 
for these different things that are already a part of me. Again, I'm not like making things up. Like I realize I've been natural for five years. Cool, so how do I showcase that in a way that will attract viewers? Hence my five year LinkedIn video, like doing a salon experience. And that is my number one video right now. I think it's got like 12,000 views. <laughs> like, whoa, because of the fact that I maximized on something that people already enjoy seeing. Um, telling my five year natural hair story. Tons of people have done that, but I was like, okay, I can share my story. Not BSing, I'm sharing my story. And uh, that's my second top video. I think it's at 9,000 to 10,000 views. I see that people are interested in AKA. Well, I've been at AKA for five years, so how do I showcase that in a way that's attractive to people? I did a vlog of my Boulay experience. A lot of people don't get to go to Boulay. A lot of people like to see Boulay. They hear of Boulay. Well, let me show them a person actually being a part of Boulay and like actually getting to see a lot of behind the scenes and do a lot of stuff. Cool, so I just showcase in a way that attracts people and then I use the right tags so that um, when it comes up in searches, you know, if somebody typed it in aka boulet i think you can even still do it now aka 68 boulet my video is like either the top video or the second uh, the top video on the front page you know so using those very small things that make such a huge difference like i'm not doing anything very crazy like i don't have money to spend to like buy followers or, or buy like attention or buy sponsorships like i don't have that kind of gig right now because i'm in college so i'm literally just using very small like little things that are huge like literally use the resources that you have I could do a whole nother video on this honestly because at this point the video is already at like nine minutes and we have other questions to answer so I won't go too much more in depth but just know that there are very simple ways to make a huge impact and grow your following on YouTube if you guys are interested in another video on that I will gladly do that just hop down in the comments and let me know hey that's something I'm looking to see or hit me up some kind of way and I'll make sure I do a separate video on that okay. so next question how long have you been natural because your hair is bomb sis thank you I appreciate that I really love my natural hair y'all know that is like my baby even though she's hidden right now because I needed a break but she up under here you know she tucked away real nice and pretty and shout out to this hair this bob shout out to Kimberly Gale again my hairstylist the one that is the one doing my hair in that bomb video that has 12,000 views Kimberly Gale her information will also be in the description I hope I remember to put all the stuff in the description box if I don't just holler at me but yeah she did this bomb bob it is a full sewing with a closure so my curls are not gone they're just up under here sleeping for a little bit down hibernation but yeah so I've been natural for five years my natural hair video um, I'll link it actually up top so if you want to know the whole ins and outs of my natural hair journey go watch that video it is all about my full five-year experience but also I think I took it all the way back to like first <laughs> so if you want to know all about my natural hair being natural for five years go check out that video um, have you ever had a boyfriend everybody's favorite question to ask me which is so funny because I'm like I feel like y'all already know the answer to that but there's tons of you who don't know me like in real life on here so I will answer no I have never had a boyfriend yes I am 24 and a half years old and I have never had a boyfriend in 2018 wow I'm a unicorn <laughs> I am a unicorn. It's fine. I've accepted it at this point. I'm very intentional about that. Again, that can also be a whole separate video. You can check out my praying for... I forget the title. I'll link that one too. Check out that video. I kind of talk about it a little bit, but if you guys want something more in depth about why I'm 24 and a half and I've never had a boyfriend, let me know. Okay, this question is really good and also could be a whole separate video. These could all be videos. I might take these as like video suggestions and just do that. But anywho, were you concerned about your faith when you were going green? Let me tell you guys, I actually was. I, because of the stories I heard, I realize now that the reason I was so afraid and so intimidated by that, one is because the Holy Spirit, I believe, lives inside of me and the Holy Spirit raises awareness in me when I need to be aware of things and so I think he made sure that I addressed my faith and my belief in this process because I feel like when you don't that's when you get in trouble and so I did rely on people who are strong in the faith ministers also just my mentors the people that I love who are strong in their faith but also Greek I went to them and asked like what does this mean like help me understand like am I doing something wrong am I going against God by being a part of this organization and again the sad part is the reason I was thinking 
am I going against God automatically? One is because of rumors I've heard, some truths that you hear about Greek life, but also some rumors, and just kind of rooted in ignorance, and I feel like that ignorance is what's perpetuated to like most people about Greek life. But yes, I did consider my faith, yes, I prayed about it, yes, I made sure, like, Lord, first of all, if this isn't you, close the door. I'm not thirsty for these letters. Quite honestly, it's a great opportunity, but I'm not thirsty, Lord. I'm good with you and my friends and the other opportunities that you've given me. So if this is not what you want from me, close the door. And he opened it and not only opened it, but blessed me immensely. It's still blessing me through that organization. So, so yeah, I did consider my faith before I went. And I love the sweetheart who inserted this question. I love her to death, so I am excited to answer this. But it's two parts. So the first part says, um, how did you maintain being a Christian in high school without being the churchy girl? Mm. Part two says, also, how did you maintain pressure in school when students know that you're the good girl and they're waiting for you to make a wrong move? Wow. Wow, so much I could say. Okay, let me start by saying churchy. I kind of hate that word. Like, I, I, okay, I don't hate. But I strongly dislike the word churchy because to me, churchy is an act. Churchy is a performance. Churchy is like a lot. To be honest, like churchy is like, it's fun to be churchy or like, you know, but it's very stereotypical. Like, you know, it's just very, it's over the top. It's doing the most. And so people assume that when you're a believer that you have to be churchy and it's like no like if, if you see me even using the word churchy or acting churchy or whatever like that's around my friends or believers and like we're joking around at the house but I feel like there is this pressure that okay if I'm a believer especially when you're young there's this pressure that I have to like look like this churchy I have to look like this stereotypical what people expect I have to be you know, carrying a Bible and smacking people over the head with it every day. Like, no, no. Like, so my best way I can answer this is in high school, like, even now, like, people know I'm a believer before I even say it. I actually have a blog on this. I'll also link that in the description box. But I have a blog on this that I don't even call myself a Christian. I, I call myself a believer. To me, Christianity is tainted. It's worldly these days. Like, it's just, it's, it's icky. So I go by a believer because that's what I am. Like, I don't have Christian tattooed on my forehead. It's in my lifestyle. It's in the way that I treat people. It's in the way that I talk, the way that I move, like the way that I carry myself. Like that's what being a believer and what that's what having faith looks like for me. Like encouraging others, inspiring others to the point where people look at me and they'll, they'll be the ones to say like, something's different about you. Like, what is different about you or what is this like why you, i remember somebody in college like stopped me after one of our classes and was like there's just something different about you like you just have this this light like what is that and i i literally i had to fight back tears y'all know i'm a crybaby because i was like this is it like this is the point to me this is what god meant and it's not to say I'm hiding my faith or anything like that. I will talk about my faith in a, in a heartbeat, y'all know. I'll do it anywhere. Even in that moment when that person uh, asked me, I stopped and told them, like, I'm a believer. I believe in Jesus Christ. He's the one that puts his light down inside of me. Like, I reflect him. So I hope that's helpful for you to know, like, you don't have to necessarily Bible beat people. And you don't have to look like a stereotypical churchy person. Like, be you. Live your life. But also, be conscious about, am I looking like Christ? Like, that's my main question for myself. If I look like Christ, I, I'm straight. Because anything else will fall in line. So yeah, I hope that answers that question. And then the second part, also, how do you maintain pressure in school when students know that you're the good girl and they're waiting for you to make a wrong move? <laughs> that should be the title of my life documentary. That should be my autobiography or my biography. Literally, they used to call me goody goody two shoes when I was little. And I feel like, even though people don't say that as much now, well, no, I can't even say that. People do kind of say like, well, like you don't know how it is, or mm, I would love to see you be in this position and see what you do. As if like me being a virgin or me being, you know, whatever would not be the case if I had dudes barking down my door. 
Here's the thing. If the only reason I'm a virgin is because I ain't getting no holler, then I'm not really a virgin. Like, you just ain't experienced nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not the same thing. I, these, these decisions and who I have chosen to be, is that a choice? Like, this is an intentional decision. This was a commitment. This is not just like, oh, well, just because I ain't getting no holler, I'm going to fake it out that I'm just committed to being a virgin to Christ. No, that's not fake. That's real. Um, so anyways, I do feel like people just kind of just wait for like a mess up. And all I can say is the thing is I'm human. So I mess up all the time just because it's not on advertisement or just because it's not in a way where people could really see. Like I'm human. I'm a sinner. I'm going to mess up. So my advice to you would be, I feel like the pressure of like, oh no, they're gonna see me mess up, or oh, they're waiting to see me mess up, you're relying on human opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like you're thinking about like, what do people think about me? What are they gonna say? What are they gonna whatever? And even though this is something I'm still working through, so I can't necessarily tell you, oh, just don't care what people say. Like, nah. Even the person, even the people who say they don't care about what people think, you care. You, you care. That's why you even made a comment like that. Like, you care. I would just say, if you notice yourself, like, putting the opinions of other people over God's opinion of you, like, God gives grace. Period. Point blank. It's the truth. He gives grace and mercy. It's new every morning. Like, he's faithful to us. His love never changes. There's nothing. The Bible says, literally, there's nothing we could do to, like, strip us out of his hand. Like, we can't, we can't be separated from Christ, like, his, from his love. He loves us regardless. You could do the worst thing in the world. And still, if you sincerely repent in your heart and turn back to God, he's there waiting for you. Like, we're the ones that be moving and going places. He stands and stays in the same position at all times. So I think if you think about that, put his perspective over other people's perspective. Like, if you're putting his perspective above, you know that even if I do mess up, that there's grace and mercy. God got me. He loves me, etc., etc. If you have that perspective over the perspective of what other people say or what they think, you won't even be worried about it. I mean, you will a little bit because we're human. But think about the fact that God gives grace and put that over top of whatever anybody else could say or think. If you're striving to reflect God, anything else that happens along the way is just part of the story. So I hope that helps. If not, you know, I can always go further and with you individually because I know you. So, um, so yeah. Okay, just a few more questions, guys. This one says, if you could be any animal, what would you be? You know, okay, this is two part because on one hand, like, I just, I love turtles. I love turtles. Y'all, I will tell you the truth. I got emotional when I, I was in, I was in Chicago. It was over the summer. This was last summer. I was walking, went to a little park, a little lake park, and there was a turtle that swam up like near the side and I was getting emotional. Like, girl, why are you crying? It was just so cute. Like, I just, wow, I love turtles. So on one hand, it's like, okay, turtle, because I love turtles. But like, do I want to be a turtle? I don't know. They move slow, they got the hard shell, they can't stretch and stand up. Like, I don't know if I want to be a turtle, even though I love turtles. So what do what animal do I want to be? Um, I think I would want to be a bird, maybe, just because I feel like if they're so majestic that they can fly over, they can see above stuff. Come on, that's deep. They can they rise above. I think I would want to be a bird. And if you ask my friends in Joshua, I'm a giraffe. I'm Melvin from uh, Madagascar. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put that out there. The next one is like a joke because LOL. They said, when can we have a fix my life session here the go? Child, let me just be all the way real. I'm trying to fix my own life. I can't fix y'all's life. I am trying my best to live right, to live for Jesus, to do things right, to finish school, like, it looks pretty because we always like to show, I, I like to be positive, I like to influence people, I like to show y'all the good, like, I don't, I don't understand why people say, like, don't nobody ever show me bad on social media. That's not necessarily true, because I feel like I do when I am intentional about sharing the bad. 
like, that's the thing. We can't all just be out here sharing the bad and the negative stuff of life. I feel like we get enough of that in the news. Like, we get that in our politics. We get that everywhere. Like, negativity is what the world is. So I feel like us showing the light about life is like, that's what it should be about. So yes, I show y'all my light and the good moments and how God moves through me. Like, so yes, that probably looks like really, oh my gosh, my life is amazing. The fact that somebody would ever say I'm a goat is hilarious to me. <laughs> but I, I thank you for the compliment. Um, how about, you know, as I live my life, as I've done, I will just show y'all what God does through me. And hopefully through that and those testimonies, that can help you fix your life too. But we all fix our lives together. So, but thank you so much for that. When looking for a significant other, what three things are most important besides looks? <laughs> okay, um, the first thing, and y'all probably like, duh, but it's the truth, so I'm gonna say, first thing is a relationship with Christ. And by relationship, I don't mean you go to church, I don't mean you've heard of Jesus, I don't mean your grandmama prays, like a relationship with Christ. I want a husband who's more in tune with Christ and is like stronger than, with Christ than I am, which might be a crazy thing to to want but i i feel like in order for you to lead me in order for us to really make an impact you know in the world for christ and to do ministry together like that's what i desire so a real relationship with christ like not the fake stuff like genuine stuff like you like on side of christ that is not the like number one okay the next thing i think i think this would be the next thing um i want a family guy like, that probably sounds really crazy. And I feel like different types of men can be a family guy. But, like, I want a big family. And I'm just waiting for, like, a time when I'm, you know, maybe on a date with somebody or something. And I mention how many kids I want. And they just look at me like, <laughs> It's like, <laughs> because I really, I, I'm not out here on the, like, the Duggar family, 19 kids accounting. We're not doing all that. But I really do want a big family. I feel like I have a lot to pour into a family. I'm very family oriented now. Like I consider the friends around me that I really invest in. I consider them family. Like we do family trips now. Like we do, like we talk about the kind of things that we want to do for our kids and for our families. So yeah, and he's gotta be a family guy. Like he would be miserable around me and my friends if he's not a family guy. I think the third thing that I'm gonna just go with because this is on the spot, but I think honesty. Um, I've dealt with dishonesty and I've seen what dishonesty does in other relationships. And I feel like this is linked in with being a family guy, but also being a believer. Like it's linked to the other two because I feel like that kind of man is an honest man. Like somebody who can be honest about his past, who can be honest about his present struggles. Come on, somebody. Um, who can be honest with me just on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Like I don't want to be in the dark. I don't want to have to have this distrust or constantly questioning your motives or your actions like an honest man. So I think that we're going to stop there. Yes, an honest man. So believer, a real believer, um, family guy, and honest, honest. The last question, we are at the last question. Uh, what are some things you would like to achieve before you die? Wow. Um, so I guess the first one, since I was already on this, uh, this trend, um, I want to be able to invest in a family. I want a family really bad <laughs> before I die, Lord. I'm only 24 and a half, guys. I should not be acting like it's the end of the world. I don't have a family. But I really want the opportunity to invest in a family. Um, I'm gonna have a salary one of these days, Lord, which again, I'm being dramatic because that's probably hopefully gonna happen before I die. But yeah, just get out of school, you know? Like, I love school, I love the opportunity I have right now. Please do not misinterpret me. I love this season of my life. But one day, I'm gonna have a real job. Um, and then hopefully, I want to really have a major impact on education before I die, whether that's locally, even though I believe that. Um, it will be a systems level thing. I want to either on the district or the state level, I really want to impact the lives of minority students, underrepresented students, underserved students. I want to change the narrative about their experience with education. Like that would just, if I could have that kind of an impact, wow, that would just, that would be amazing. So I look forward to hopefully doing that. I guess I should have said this first week before I said family, but a husband, that would be nice, Lord, before I die. 
again, being dramatic, I'm only 24 and a half. But husband, family, um, I want to be able to take my family overseas, even if it's not like I paid for it necessarily. Although that would be a blessing, Lord, if I have supposed to eventually be able to do that. But I want to experience overseas with all of my family. I've been to Italy before, but I was 12 years old. I was in sixth grade. I was by myself. I was with my uh, school choir, but my family was not with me. And so trying to describe things like the Sistine Chapel or looking at the Vatican or looking at the Colosseum in Rome, like trying to describe these things to my family and even show them pictures that they have a digital camera back then and I took very good pictures, have a scrapbook and all. But trying to explain that experience is nothing compared to like, you need to see this. Like I want you to see this and experience this. And my parents have never been overseas. I think me, me and my brother, my older brother, my younger brother has been out of the country. He was in a uh, Dominican Republic. So we've all three been out of the US, like beyond, in, in Canada, you know? And I want my parents to be able to experience that. They have invested in us. They're the reason that we've been able to have those experiences. So I want them to be able to experience that. Before I die, before they die, I want to be able to take my family overseas. All right, I think I'm gonna stop there. I think that's enough for that question. Um, I could go on and on, because there's a lot of things I wanna do, but that's what journals are for, not for a 30 minute video. So thank you guys if you stuck around through this. I hope this was personal enough. I hope this gave you a little insight into who I am. If you're interested in more basic things about who I am, I will also link Hopefully I remember to link the Q&A that I did for my first video actually because that'll give you some more information about who I am and what I'm about etc etc so thank you so much for those who submitted questions thank you to all my new followers thank you to everyone this is such a fun and awesome experience and you guys stay encouraging me stay showing me love and I really really truly appreciate it so until the next video I will see you guys later bye